In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Perch to edit content on a website you've created in Adobe Muse. To get started, I've downloaded the Influence starting design. I have it here in Adobe Muse, and the first thing I need to do once I've finished getting the design how I want it, and I'm ready to start uh, publishing and uh, managing the content, I need to publish it and choose the export as HTML option. And that's what I've done already, uh, and I've set that up in my website. So if I look at that here, here's my website with those uh, that page exported and ready to start working with. I've also in the same site installed a copy of Perch uh, and that's all ready to go. We've got other videos that show you how you do that, how you get Perch up and running. It's quite simple. So if I look at my page in my web editor, which I'm, I'm using Sublime Text here to show me the HTML of the page, you can see I've got an index.html page and to get started using Perch, they, uh, the pages need to be PHP pages. So I need to change the extension of this from .html to .php. So that should be quite easy. I can just choose rename and change .html to .php. So if I go back to my browser and refresh that, that's now using the .php file and I'm ready to start adding some PHP into the page. With any Perch uh, page, first thing you need to do is actually add Perch itself to the page. And you do that by just saying include Perch Runtime. So now when this page loads, Perch, uh, the Perch content management system is going to be referenced by this page. And everything that the CMS offers is going to be available in this page. So the first thing we've got at the top is this big heading that says an event for entrepreneurs. Now, let's say we wanted to make that editable by our client. What we do is create what we call an editable region. So we need to find where that exists in the HTML. Now, Adobe Muse outputs a lot of HTML. Obviously, it's, it's generated by software rather than by a human. So it can be a bit messy. It can be a little bit hard to find what you need. Um, but if we keep scrolling, here it is. Here's the text that we want to change. So what I'm going to do is go into the page at this point and create a perch editable region. We do that by typing PHP and then perch content. And then we give it a name. So uh, main heading. And what I'll do is remove the uh, HTML that was already in there. So I'll save that. So now in this part of the page is an editable region. If I go back and refresh in the browser, you'll see that text is gone, which is great. And if we switch to Perch and refresh here, you'll see that our home page is now showing up and that main heading we just created is there. So if I click through to the main heading, I need to pick a template for it. I'm just going to say text block, just use one of the default templates that we have built in. And I'm going to then add the text I want. So I'll say um, editing with perch is fun. I save that. Refresh the page in the browser. And there's the text. So that's pretty simple. If we scroll down, we see we've got this uh, section here that has a, a subheading and two columns. Now what we could do is create a separate editable region for the heading and a separate region for each of these columns. But that would be pretty awkward to work with. What we want to do is create the whole thing as one region with a heading and the two columns. And to do that we need to create a custom template. So if we find where that happens in the page, I think it's this a chance of a lifetime event. Let me check. Yep. So if we find that section, and I'm going to select it, I think I've got it all there. It's a bit hard to see. I've put my text nice and big, uh, which can make it a little bit difficult to see as it goes over multiple pages. Right, I'm going to cut that to my clipboard, and in its place, create another region. 
So perch underscore content, we'll call this one intro. Save that. And if we go back, hopefully that's then gone. Yes, that's looking good. So our new region will be in the gray stripe there. Now I've got on my clipboard the HTML that made up that intro section that we just deleted. So what I want to do is create that as, as a custom template to work with in Perch. So if I go into my Perch folder, templates and content, I'll create a new file and call it, uh, I'll call it intro to col because there are two columns in it. And I'll paste in exactly what I had before. So as I said, there are three elements to this. There's the, uh, the title and then there's the two columns. Obviously, Adobe Muse doesn't know about CSS Multicol, so it's put at the um, what should have been one continuous bit of text displayed as two columns. It breaks it up into two. Fine, we can work with that. So we want to replace this text with something that's editable. So we'll remove that. And what we're going to put in here is a perch template tag. So we'll say perch content ID equals we give it an ID. The type we want is just text. We give it a label for the person editing the site to see. I'll just be heading. I'm going to make it required. So required equals true and close my tag. I'm going to do the same down here where we've got these uh, two columns. In fact, let's just copy that to my clipboard so that I've got it to paste in as content later. And I'll add, a uh, add another tag, content. I'll call this one col1. Uh, the type is going to be a text area. We'll give it a label for the editor to see. Uh, I'm going to just call it column1. And I'm going to say I want to use the markdown formatting language and um, I'm going to use a, a, an editor called Mark It Up on the page. So that looks good. Duplicate that. Bring it down here for our second column. Change it to col2, column2. I'll get rid of this. So we've replaced the text that uh, Muse had put into the page with these content, perch content tags uh, that will enable us um, to edit it. So I'm going to save my template uh, and go back into perch. And if I now look at the regions for the home page, we've got this one called intro that, that has showed up. And if I go into templates, we can see that intro to col template that I just created. I'll select that. And then here's the um, the fields that we created. So we've got the heading, column one, column two. So let's paste in my mock Latin. And uh, we'll give it a heading. It says custom templates are easy to use. Save that. Fresh in the browser. Now you can see a difference here is I've just typed in the content just like your client would, and it's um, in mixed case. Uh, I've, I've just used normal sentence case with uppercase C and lowercase, but the design actually required everything to be uppercase. Um, now because I'm a bit daft like your client might be maybe editing stuff I didn't realize that detail and now my site looks worse than it should do well we can put sort of exercise some control over that within the templates so if I go back to my custom template back to that heading if I want this to be uppercase I can say uh, format equals UC for uppercase save that if I go back and just make sure my content is saved using that new template change. And then refresh the page. Now that text has automatically been formatted into uppercase for me. Now that's great. I could go down this page editing all the different uh, bits, making 
new editable regions and a few custom templates to make all the different elements on this page um, editable. If we look, for example, at the um, featured speakers uh, sort of modal pop-up that happens here. Now, normally in Perch, what you'd do if you wanted to make this manageable is you'd take the HTML you needed for one of these um, featured speakers and you'd create a custom template for it. You'd then put that in an editable region and say um, that that region could accept any number. Um, so the client could add just one or two, or they could add 10 or 20. Um, you could put an upper limit on how many display, of course. That would be the normal way to do things. Just define a snippet of HTML that's going to be used over and over again, and then let the content management system control how that's displayed on the page, and let the client add multiple items, delete items, reorder them, and so on. Unfortunately, a limitation of Adobe Muse is that the way the HTML is exported means that you can't just add new items. If a, a human being, if a skilled web developer was building the HTML and the CSS for this page, they would create CSS that would work so that no matter if you had one or uh, maybe a hundred um, different featured speakers here, the same CSS would apply to that HTML and it would just keep repeating and there'd be no problem. Because Adobe Muse is software and not a skilled human, what it does is it literally exports each of the items. It gives every item in the page an ID and adds the styling to the CSS for that specific item. It means you can't just keep adding more items. Unfortunately, that's going to be a limitation with any content management system working with the HTML output from Adobe Muse. It's not something specific to Perch and it's not something, unfortunately, that we can tackle in Perch itself. So while Perch will let you work with uh, HTML that's been exported from Adobe Muse. It will enable you to edit the things that are on the page, replace images with new images, replace text with new text. We can't give you the ability to add new items, to add a new image, to add a new featured speaker, because what Adobe Muse exports just simply doesn't support that. But the good news is, when you're ready to move beyond using Adobe Muse, and start building pages like you would if you were to hand code them, uh, then Perch has the capability to take what you've already done and, and move forward with you. So you've got all the capability there. You can go beyond just editing the existing items and you can be ready to start defining those custom templates, being able to add multiples, remove items, reorder items, and all that sort of thing once the HTML and the CSS of your site is ready to support that.